Hey folks, it's William with All Solar Texas. If you're considering going solar, but you think, hey, why can't I just do it myself? You've come to the right place in the video today. We'll break down all of the things you need to factor into going solar and doing it yourself. Stay tuned. All right, folks, thanks for checking out the channel. But before we dive in, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to tap on that notification bell. That keeps you up to date with all the news that we produce here on the channel and it does help our message get out in front of more people in the YouTube community. It's really important. We're committed to helping people, but we can't do that unless you subscribe and help us out. Lastly, give us a call. Reach out to us. Check out our website. Text message us. We can't wait to hear from you. We're here to help you and we respond quickly. All right, so if you're checking out this video, you must be a do-it-yourselfer kind of person. I like you already. I'm a do-it-yourself type of person. In fact, most of what I buy, um, part of the decision-making process in me buying that product, whether or not it's a vehicle or it's a, it's a tool or uh, buying a piece of equipment, is asking myself, is this something I can maintain myself? Uh, we put in a pool a few years back and of course uh, we first went with a pool person to come in and, and you know, manage our chemicals because it just seemed a lot more complex than it actually ended up being. Once I realized that I was watching this guy just go dump a bunch of chemicals in, run a brush over everything and then take off, I was thinking, you're out there 10 minutes, what am I paying you $100 a month to do? So I learned a lot about what I could do to maintain my own pool, my own chemistry and uh, you know, it's been saving me a lot of money over the years. Same thing with cars. I do a lot of manual repairs and that's why YouTube is such an amazing platform because YouTube will teach you to do just about anything. So when it comes to solar, we get a lot of calls of, of, from customers not looking to necessarily have us do solar, but just wondering, you know, what does it look like for them to do it themselves and whether or not they can get a hold of the materials and the supplies. And some folks ask us if we could just supply them with the materials and then they do it themselves. Now, I am always cautious when talking to customers, especially the, the do-it-yourself types, because I respect that and I really appreciate that mentality because I had that mentality as well. But with solar, there's so many more considerations and things that you need to factor in, which we're gonna talk about in this video. All right, before you go in and uh, have a do-it-yourself project for solar, if that's what you're looking to do, you need to make sure you understand what is that going to do for any existing warranties. This product that we sell uh, with the panels and the microinverters and the combiners and all the other components, uh, including batteries and, and other backup power options, they all have warranties and they have some of the best warranties that you could find out there on the market. Our solar panels and our microinverters have a 25 year plus warranty. Also, we back that up with labor here at All Solar Texas. Batteries, on the other hand, um, some of the newer batteries will have up to a 15 year warranty, but most of those battery products have about a 10 year warranty. But if you're thinking about doing it yourself, you need to really factor in what are those warranties and how can doing that work yourself? If you're not uh, a licensed contractor, if you don't use a licensed electrician, you may not be able to take advantage of those warranties when something goes wrong. You may very well void any of those warranties on that equipment that the manufacturer has in place simply because you decided to do it yourself. Also, if you're in a new home, many new builds uh, will have warranties on their whole home, maybe a five-year warranty, let's say. And if you go and you put in solar on that roof, you may actually be voiding that warranty as well. So before you look into doing solar yourself, you need to pay attention to what are those warranties and what warranties could you be voiding in doing that work. Another thing to consider is insurance. So when we put solar in on a home, you need to make sure that you're working with your home insurance company to make sure that that system's actually covered in the insurance policy for your home. Should God forbid something happen to your home, like a tornado come through or your home catch on fire and burn down, you wanna make sure that your, the cost of that solar system is actually going to be covered in that insurance um, policy itself. 
But if you're doing it yourself, there's going to be some additional concerns uh, that you want to make sure that you talk through with your home insurance provider. Many insurance companies will not insure a do-it-yourself solar project, which means if you're spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars in in a DIY solar system, and something does happen to your home, like a fire or a tornado, that may be a lost investment at that point. In fact, uh, there may be some other costs that now you have to pay because you know you put in that that system and the insurance provider is not going to cover it but now they may not also cover to replace your roof so you thought you were saving money up front by putting in a do-it-yourself solar project but now should something happen it's not going to be covered with insurance and maybe your roof is no longer going to be covered with insurance so now it's going to end up costing you much more money just to replace your roof and your system so before you engage in a do-it-yourself project make sure you talk to your home insurance company and get all the facts permitting is also something that we need to factor in for a do-it-yourself project. Many city ordinances have requirements where they won't even give you a permit unless you have a design that has been designed by a professional engineer and stamped and um, that makes sure that that system actually meets all of the specs and regulations of your local and city ordinances. So in many cases, you won't even get a permit to put that solar on your roof unless you use a licensed contractor, licensed electrician, um, and a professional engineer to design that system. So once you start to add all those costs up, you may not actually be saving all that money after all. So it's really important that you talk to your local city um, uh, department, your, your permitting department to understand what are their requirements in order for you to get that solar design approved and ultimately to get that system installed and make sure that you're following all of those uh, different requirements. Now you can definitely go out and you could find a licensed electrician. You could even find a licensed contractor. So if you want to do more of like the project management, you know, that's definitely a viable option. But make sure you understand what the requirements are before you go and start purchasing equipment. Otherwise, you could be left with thousands of dollars of equipment that are just going to sit in your garage because you'll never get the permit to actually install them on your roof. Other application processes that you need to consider are your HOA. Many HOAs have design requirements for solar and you need to understand what those are. You just can't slap solar panels anywhere you'd like in most HOAs. Some HOAs are very accommodating and they really don't care uh, where you put solar panels, but many HOAs do. They maybe not want them visible from the street or maybe they don't want them on the front of your house. So it's really important that you look through all of your covenants and your, your CCNRs and make sure you understand what are the requirements for your HOA and then you go through the HOA design application process and pay that fee as well to get them to review your design and feel comfortable with your intentions on placing those panels on your roof. Next we have the interconnection agreement with your local utility. So before you put in solar and you have everything installed, you can't tie it in unless you have an agreement with your interconnection uh, utility on that actual solar system itself. So your solar system is always going to be connected to the grid if it's a grid tied system. And so in order to take advantage of all of the benefits of solar, your utility has to accept that solar system being installed on your roof and coming online. They'll also have to inspect it. So along with the city that's going to have to inspect the work and the craftsmanship before uh, they'll sign off on it and allow you to turn that system on, your utility has to approve an interconnection agreement as well. Most utilities or co-op or um, municipal electric utilities will have some kind of interconnection agreement online which you could just research, download, and complete it and submit it. But that is one of the key factors that you have to consider before going solar is, is that a process that you understand? Is that something that you feel comfortable doing yourself? If not, it may cost you a little bit of extra money to get someone to help you process that. Another factor you need to consider is material sourcing. Where are you actually getting your solar panels and microinverters and all the other components from? Many of the major manufacturers that have these very nice long you know, warranties, 25 year plus warranties on their equipment, will only sell their product to distributors. And then those distributors will only sell their product to licensed installers. And the reason is, is because they know that all of those materials and those products and those warranties will be installed correctly 
and that they could then back up their warranty. They don't do direct sales to customers. So it's not like on Amazon where you can just go up on your app, look through, find a panel that you like, find micro inverters, just have them drop shipped at your house and then you're off to the races. Many of these manufacturers only have licensing agreements with certain distributors, which limits your availability of the different types of solar panels and components that are on the market, which leads you to then have a decision to make. Do I go and pay that extra money to have an installer actually come in and put solar in? Or do I need to resort to looking at other panels um, in other countries like China or Korea, where I may get a certain quality of panel that I think is going to do the trick. And then once that product comes in, um, there really isn't the warranties there. Maybe it's not as high quality of a product. So you think you're saving money, but it ends up costing you more money because those components and those panels aren't going to perform long-term like some of the better equipment that's on the market that's only available through a distributor. Lastly, before you decide on a do-it-yourself solar project, you need to factor in not just what are those upfront costs, but what are those unknown costs? What are those costs associated with risk? So for instance, if you are looking at maybe only saving about $20,000 and doing it yourself, you also need to be factoring in, well, what is that additional risk that I'm taking on? So if I do this project myself and I'm not entirely uh, accurate with how I design it, you may lose an incredible amount of production. Some of your system may not work or some of your solar arrays may not work at all or give you a decrease in production. So you're not actually getting all of the benefits out of it and it may end up costing you more in the long run. Additionally, there's just risk factors in shoddy work. Um, if this uh, ins install doesn't happen correctly and properly, now you have leaks in your roof and you may need to even replace your roof um, due to shoddy work. And so now what is that going to cost you? Additionally, with insurance, if something were to happen to your home, um, if God forbid there was a fire uh, that started because of some shoddy electrical work and now you burn down your home, uh, what's that worth to you? Knowing that the insurance company isn't going to compensate you for that home because it wasn't done with the licensed installer. So these are all factors that you need to consider before just doing it yourself. There are ways of doing it yourself that are responsible. You, uh, sourcing material that has a really good product warranty and manufacturer guarantee, um, making sure that you're uh, working not just with a licensed electrician, but also a licensed contractor as well. There's a bunch of different contracting companies out there, but not all of them are licensed for electrical work. So you can't just reach out to a lo local HVAC company or even a local roofing company and think, well, hey, you're on my roof. Why don't you put solar on too? If they're not licensed for the electrical piece, then you're probably putting yourself at greater risk in getting that job done. And you ultimately may not be saving as much money as you think because you haven't factored in all of the risk that's associated with that project. All right, folks, that about wraps it up for today. But before we take off, drop a comment below and let me know, have you ever completed a do-it-yourself project that you thought you were saving money and then it ended up costing you money? I've been there myself. I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for checking us out today and God bless.